Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Lavita de Souza. And I'm Hardik. And we'll be your host for this evening. It gives us immense pleasure to welcome each and everyone who has joined us today for this talk organized by the Institution's Innovation Council of JSS Science and Technology University. Institution's Innovation Council is the brainchild of the Ministry of Education, formerly known as MHRD of the Government of India, which has established an innovation cell to systematically foster the culture of innovation amongst all higher education institutions. The primary mandate of IIC is to encourage, inspire, and nurture young minds by providing them the opportunity and exposure on what the best of the brains can think on various dynamic issues of the society and support them to work on new ideas. Speaking of new ideas, we, the members of IIC JSST, present you the very first episode of the entrepreneurial talk show, Innovocals. Innovocals is a platform where you bring to the great minds of a generation who have pioneered and excelled in their domains and have made a monumental impact with their path-breaking ideas. This session will give an idea to the audience on what it takes to be a successful entrepreneur and will inspire them to perceive their own potential ideas. Change is called for innovation and innovation leads to progress. To prove this, we have with us today one such mastermind, Dr. SCG Kiruba Daniel, the CTO and co-founder of JK Nano Solutions. He started his journey with the Bachelors of Science from the Madhra College in Tamil Nadu and went on to do his Masters from the University of Madras and got his doctorate from Anna University, the subject of nanobiotechnology. He's a postdoctoral fellow and visiting researcher of the prestigious IISC. His company, JK Nano Solutions, is incubated in Incense, IISC Bangalore, and has been successful in providing solutions to many of the major water solution, water pollution problems, such as the Bellendulur problem and the Dhobi Ghat problem. His vision towards solving these issues at a low cost is truly remarkable. Well, the achievements list doesn't stop there. He is the recipient of the National Award from the Vice President of India and the CM of Karnataka during the Indian Science Congress for the Pride of India event 2020. He is also the winner of Design Impact Award by Titan and Tata Trust and the winner of Elevate 100 in 2017. He was selected as one amongst the top 20 innovators for building Digital India by the Indian government and one among the top 10 to represent India for the AIT camp held in Switzerland in 2016. He has 11 patents and 21 publications under his name and the list goes on. Now, before we move on to the talk by Sir, I would like to make a request to the audience to drop your question or anything you'd like to know from Sir in the chat box. I now extend a warm welcome to Dr. Kiruba Daniel Sir, and I'd like to thank you for accepting our invitation to speak here today. Over to you, Sir. Hi, good evening. Uh, thanks for inviting us for this uh, uh, event which you are starting and uh, the platform where you are uh, trying, to know, uh, trying to help the students and motivate students to innovate so um, actually like uh, during this lockdown uh, the, due to this lockdown and all we are uh, we go sometimes inside IIC, we go to company so you know work from home is also going on so currently i am around out of like north bangalore uh, sitting here and the place and uh, trying to uh, inspire you people uh, with whatever i know and whatever i have, uh, I have gone through till now and uh, what we have learned from the entrepreneurship journey so I am also like uh, started from, uh, uh, I'm not uh, like, uh, we are not a pure businessman or uh, we are not uh, uh, like coming from a business uh, family. And then uh, we are, we are I'm like, like we started from education background and uh, I never thought of doing a startup uh, six years back. I'll tell you how it, uh, how we started, like uh, how we, we uh, uh, started from uh, uh, doing normal research on a desktop uh, and coming to taking a product uh, and solving local issues uh, and also for uh, some few global issues also. So I will tell you about that. I will start sharing the screen and I'm trying to. Uh, yeah.
Yeah, so uh, I'm also part of Indian Institute of Science. Uh, I'm working with the uh, artificial intelligence and neuromorphic computing. There is a team and uh, I help in developing new nanotechnology based sensors uh, for implementing with the IoT and uh, uh, trying to uh, develop uh, uh, very small sized uh, devices. I will show you during this talk about uh, what we are uh, uh, developing in IAC as well. So uh, I don't want to leave IAC because uh, we need this, this is one of the top institutions in, in India and uh, uh, they have enough facilities to do all the research related to nanotechnology and all. So, so what I am uh, telling is uh, finding solution to day-to-day -day problems. So these two people I just want to uh, introduce, like uh, she is a, a school student when she got this award in 2013. Uh, she developed a bioplastic made from banana peel. So her name is Elif and uh, she is from Turkey and uh, she didn't use any hi-fi lab for doing this. And why I'm saying is, many of the students, we think that we should be from very big elite institution and we should be educated at a, 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 maybe a central or some top reputed institution to do innovations. So there is no need like that. We can do innovation right from the kitchen from where you are or from the house or from wherever you like you can start doing you know you can start innovating and you can plan something different and think differently so she is the best example for that she developed a bioplastic made from banana peels right from the kitchen from where and she got some advice from a few mentors and that's how she did the other guy who is his name is anirudh sharma he's from india so he is a uji dropout and uh, he developed this uh, 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 he developed a device which can convert a polluted air coming from emission of the vehicles and that can be made into a powder dark powder uh, black powder and that is put in inkjet printers for printing imagine so he is converting all our uh, polluted air into powder and the powder to be used as a uh, used in inkjet printers so he named it as car ink, otherwise air ink, you could have seen the terms. So it's completely different. So imagine like, uh, uh, he, uh, so at that time, this innovation was completely revolutionary and uh, many people, many it came in media and uh, he got a call from MIT Media Lab. So Massachusetts Institute of Technology, one of the top five engineering institutions in the world. So he got a call from there asking him to join Media Lab. So he told that he's uh, uh, he doesn't have any degree to apply for any program in MIT or something. They told doesn't require. You can come and join. Uh, irrespective of that, we uh, we just want you to do innovations. So that's how he uh, uh, he joined MIT, and that's how he was like. Uh, uh, still, uh, he has more than eight more innovations other than this. And he came back to Indian Institute of Science. And he was uh, giving a talk at one of the faculty hall where Nobel laureates have given talk. So imagine, so uh, being a huge dropout, he, uh, he just by his thinking and by his ideas, he was able to, uh, uh, by his innovations, he went to Media Lab, MIT Media Lab, and he gave a lot of TED Talks and all. I will show now them. And then came back to India and delivering talk in one of the best institutions in India. So that's the impact of innovation and to think differently. So most important thing to you guys is, the most important thing is we have to think differently. And you have to think about ideas which has to solve local problems or or any uh, uh, any other problem. We can take the problem first and devise a solution rather than make a product and try to sell it. So it is easy to see a problem and then create a thing and create a product. It can be even an algorithm or it can be even a uh, it can be even a chemical or it can be a product. It can yeah, you just you have to design thinking. It's known as design thinking. So you have to think differently and develop product to solve a uh, uh, develop product to solve a problem rather than 
create a product and then thinking of selling to the market so that's the most important thing so uh, this word so uh, just for nanotechnology based thing i'm just telling um, the tipu sultan sword contains a fine coating of carbon nanotubes uh, like uh, this uh, has been found by russian scientist and recently in uh, tamil nadu kiladi also they have found 2600 years back uh, people have developed uh, means people have been uh, by knowingly or unknowingly has been uh, making nano products so why i am saying about nanotechnology is in this talk i will be touching how nanotechnology i will be giving some basics of nanotechnology and uh, this is not new nanotechnology is not new in the last 10 20 years we are seeing it as new but it is there for the last 1000 to 2000 years both man made as well as natural um, that's why it has high tensile strength and can cut silk imagine so uh, that's the power of uh, uh, nanotechnology like uh, in natural systems like this gecko uh, this lizards and all having uh, uh, can you, you can see that uh, it is having the uh, uh, the uh, the legs or having micro structures of hairs which is taken under scanning electron microscope and it is there naturally made it's naturally evolved and uh, by evolution it has been there to help the geckos walking upside down and all it's not just glue or something else in their legs it is because of the nano and micro structures present in the gecko legs that is it also nanotechnology is uh, uh, there in butterflies in one of the moth butterfly as made by um, in japan it has been published the moth butterfly is having uh, wings which is having nano structure patterns you can see that and uh, this nano structure pattern when the light falls on that due to thin film inter interference you can see a color and different angles so that's the power of nanotechnology in Uh, butterfly uh, means uh, in uh, uh, butterfly wing it has been like it can be seen uh, so nagoya institute of technology has published this particular paper about uh, nanotechnology being implemented in butterfly wings so where this is being implemented is this particular natural evolution has been implemented in a dress in a, can you see this the sydney designer has made a dress where it is uses a structurally colored fibers which mimics the microscopic structure of uh, the moth butterfly when the light falls on different angles the the fabric will show a different color uh, so uh, this is it's almost like uh, your pigeon you may have seen pigeon neck the neck of a pigeon has iridescent color the feather this iridescence is not due to any dye or color or uh, it is not due to any dyeing but it is because of the thin film interference of light falling on the pigeon wing uh, pigeon wing having microstructure nanostructure pattern not only in pigeon neck it is also there in peacock feather you can see in peacock feather the iridescence color so this is being used in making smart fabrics not only in uh, the sydney design has done in japan and manufacturing is done in japan not only there even in india for smart fabrics for soldiers have been innovations has been done patented but will not be revealed because of its strategic use so bank notes uh, you can see the bank notes uh, um, and we were using we are using for the last 60 years a day uh, which is being used while making bank notes but currently bank note uh, has been we have, has been started using quantum materials quantum nano materials as well as uh, the structured pattern from butterflies similar structures in india we have started using planning to use uh, zinc oxide and quantum dots which will give fluorescence and a uv light so like this such kind of structures present in bank notes will stop uh, forging or uh, any uh, uh, any illegal uh, making of currencies so that can be counterfeiting and all can be stopped because no one else can make such structured patterns other than the real uh, machines which are doing it yeah. so also in lotus leaf imagine this lotus leaf water droplets which you may have seen from childhood is not because of uh, uh, just wax coating on the lotus leaf it's because of super hydrophobicity 
due to the microstructured pattern present on the lotus leaf. So due to that microstructured pattern, the droplets can easily go here and there and the contact angle, if, you tell, if I have to tell in D, it's because of the contact angle you can see in a goniometer, there is a special meter where the water, uh, due to the contact angle, the droplets, uh, the superheterophobicity has been established on lotus leaf and uh, the water droplet remains like a, uh, in a spherical shape rather than as a, so if it is hydrophilic, uh, it will be like uh, the droplet will be sticking to the leaf if it, since it is hydrophobic, not only hydrophobic, super hydrophobic. So the droplets can uh, easily uh, go here and there. So that, that's why because uh, to help the lotus leaf uh, not to get, uh, not to get smudged in water and uh, will be destroyed. So the same principle has been used in self-cleaning fabrics by super hydrophobic coating. Imagine uh, if you have a shirt, and you can use it for the entire week. Uh, we will be having only a small suitcase while going to hostels of our institution. We don't have to buy so many dress. The dress will change color by the uh, nanostructure pattern and it will also self clean. You Even if you put a sauce or a dirt or a sewage wood or anything, if it falls on it, due to your super hydrophobic nature, it will like ripple it away. So that's the impact of. So people, uh, scientists are trying to develop new uh, designers are trying to develop, use mimic nanotechnology present in nature to develop new smart fabrics. So that's what is going on. Also in molluscan shell, uh, can you see the molluscan shell? Uh, this molluscan shell, there is an iridescence color you can see there. Uh, so this molluscan shell uh, iridescence color is because of the patterned uh, calcite crystals and uh, due to the same thin film interference and there is an irradiation uh, due to that. So in nanotechnology is not restricted to man-made structures. It is there in nature helping organisms for their survival on day-to-day, -day, uh, like day-to-day -day survival. Okay, I'll come uh, going back to entrepreneurship and just going about nanotechnology because uh, I was there, I mean, I'm still there. We are using nano products for our startup, so I'm just explaining about nanotechnology. So, this story, I think, I don't know hey, how many of you know. I will explain you now that a uh, uh, young guy after 10th standard or metric, he ran from Chennai to Bombay, Mumbai, with some 50, 60 rupees, and then he, he started wiping uh, tables and chairs in the streets of Mumbai and uh, then he started a push cart. He made some dosas and then this picture is a representative image where you can see a push cart kind of thing. But in the real thing where he was using push cart, it has been, uh, it, uh, it has been told that he was using mask, head cover, gloves, what we are using during COVID, he was using during the regular uh, means uh, during the uh, uh, sale uh, means uh, preparing the dosas and selling it to show that his push cart and his uh, his dosa business is more hygienic than others so there is uh, so many push carts in the same street but people was going people are going to him and buying the dosas and then he rented a room and the room uh, he made 150 different types of dosas he did innovation in dosa. What he likes, he did innovation in that. And then he came, became, uh, hired a uh, room in a mall. Currently, he has more than 60 branches across the world. He has one branch in New Zealand, one in UAE, and one in uh, Dubai, uh, and one in Kuwait, uh, Qatar, somewhere. So his annual turnover is 60 crores, 6200 crores, I think, right now. Imagine he is a metric student. He was thinking differently. He was trying to, uh, the marketing skill is different and he did innovation in both dosas. Just go to dosaplacer.com. You will be knowing uh, how he is different and how the dosas, how many different types of varieties of dosas he is making rather than the regular. So he got, uh, he met the president of India and uh, he has given talk in different places. Imagine he is a metric student. He was just a metric dropout. 
he is hiring iim graduates uh, iim gold medalist and all for his uh, team of management imagine so being uh, even though he is not graduated with a degree but he is uh, managing and hiring people from top management institution right now uh, so that's the impact of his thinking and uh, impact of uh, um, is innovation in whatever he is doing so it's very important to do or innovate or do things differently in whatever profession or stream what means you may be a passion about you may be passionate about civil engineering you may be passionate about chemical engineering you may be passionate about a particular uh, in uh, civil in uh, uh, chemical engineering or civil engineering you are passionate about bridges or something if you are do- if you are doing things differently if you do things differently if you are trying to innovate in the process of building a house or something different in the particular in the in the field where you are passionate about it can be even a photography it can it may be even a photography it can be anything so if you are passionate and if you are do things differently in that uh, line of business or field so you will be shining up so you will be different you will be unique than others so that's the thing uh, so coming to nanotechnology like richard feynman is the father of nanotechnology he gave a talk very famous talk at caltech um, there is plenty of space at the bottom that's the title of the talk in 1959 when people never thought about the field of nanotechnology so he was telling that at uh, atomic level and molecular level there is so much space where we can arrange the atoms and uh, so that's uh, that's why the title of the talk is that's plenty of space at the bottom the bottom means at atomic and molecular level so we can rearrange things and change the property of materials so here you can see the uh, colors of uh, the bottles are there so each all of them belong to the same nano material but the size of the particle in the bottle is different just one nanometer if you change collectively it looks in a different color so that's what uh, so how it is different is the bulk material uh, will be having a 1 into 1 into cube and uh, the number of atoms are exposed to the surface is very less so when you break the same 1 into 1 into 1 into centimeter cube into smaller uh, pieces then you will be getting a uh, more amount of uh, means the number of atoms present exposed at the surface of the cube smaller cube should be more so the percentage of atoms are and the surface are more and that will impact differently with light sound temperature not only this also with the, it will have different magnetic properties it will have different um, so it will have different kind of uh, uh, photoelectric or even electronic properties everything will be changing based on the uh, optical properties are changing like everything will change based on the high surface area of the nano materials which interact with the Uh, like we uh, interact with the forms of energy that is affecting it so i will tell you an example what uh, uh, in defense um, there is a, we used to see b52 and there some some stealth jets so such stealth jets are having sharp edges so the word stealth means uh, to be invisible under radar in, in terms of air force i'm saying so uh, the stealth jets with sharp edges uh when they go through uh, a border border or uh, it crosses a border the radars of a country will detect it with the signature of a bird but when a normal aircraft goes because the radio waves are cut by the sharp edges of the stealth uh, aircrafts so that's a regular thing that's why the stealth aircrafts are expensive to procure or to purchase or to manufacture that's why uh, uh, there are very less cell jets in, even in indian air force so right now what uh, has happened in the nanotechnology is there is a nano paint which consists of radio wave absorbing nano materials and those nano materials will be like able to absorb the radio waves and those radio waves uh, cannot be reflected back to the radar so that the radar we will see we will see the signature of a bird maybe due to few radio waves or we will not even see that something is coming 
due to radio wave absorbing materials it's known as ram materials in nanotechnology and that is being used to paint aircrafts even a boeing 747 will become invisible in radar due to this particular nano paint so this has been first phone uh, developed by israel and now uh, in india three iits have developed and has been transferred so even arjun main battle tank it's a confidential information so you can't see in media I'm just telling you the arjun main battle tank if it is painted with this uh, nano paint the battle tank will be invisible to the radar and no one can see it coming so that's how nanotechnology will play a key role in defense and also in uh, medicine for drug delivery uh, we consume normal drugs uh, for uh, different type of infection or uh, medical condition for example i would say cancer or something when you take a normal drug for cancer the normal drug goes all over the blood stream if you take it orally it will go to the digestive system that it will get ingested upon and it will go all across the blood stream if it is injected by iv or something so but it may have side effects other th- if it goes to organs other than where it is intended to go so there are now nano drug delivery uh, systems where the drugs are conjugated with uh, specific uh, uh, molecules which will make sure that the drug goes only to the affected organ and treats a person of the condition so already it is there in market i'm not telling about anything which is going to come this these products which i'm explaining now including the defense is already there available uh, so there is a targeted drug delivery system for cancer available in market uh, using nanotechnology so this will affect that this will make sure that the people uh, the uh, the patients uh, will not have the side effects when a normal drug is given rather than a nano drug it goes only to the place where it is asked to go and interact so that's what is happening in nano and we have nano coatings we have uh, nano based many other uh, we have uh, for example previously we are using stainless steel rods and all during uh, for uh, for helping the bones uh, when you have a major injury in your leg or hands now we have prosthetics made of nano materials carbon fiber materials so carbon nano fiber and uh, reinforced carbon nano carbon is there and carbon nanotube based materials that will make sure that it won't be so heavy and it will keep the patients a little like easy so only thing is uh, during my phd i developed a nano ice nano tissue paper i just made tissue paper with the nano coating anti microbial nano tissue paper now it will be useful because people when a covid patient sneezes and puts the infection will spread from the normal tissue paper if it is not burnt well or it is not sanitized but in a nano tissue paper the tissue paper will have nano coating silver nano coating is not burnt so this was done like long time back uh, i didn't commercialize the product uh, so uh, someone else, we were planning to take it uh, red so and then we had nano ice nano cold cream uh, so we were also integrating nano technology with everyday products like uh, it can be not a normal cold cream can be a nano embedded cold cream so that when you put on uh, skin the nano part materials will take care of the uh, uv light which is falling as well as the nano materials will take care of any pathogens present on the surface of the skin so imagine so this man michael faraday and gold nano particles so why i'm saying this is michael faraday is a book binder so he is a book binder and uh, uh, he now he was reading books so so many books will be like uh, coming to a book binder so we will be providing at those times people used to provide books for binding so that it will be there for a long time uh, so uh, he used to read the books and he made some experiments in the shed he was having behind the book binding shop imagine and then he based on the experiments he postulated many theories one of them is the faraday laws today no one can cross school education without knowing faraday laws i think everyone knows about faraday laws and uh, faraday is uh, yes uh, so no one can cross uh, college education without knowing faraday but he himself is not a graduate so that's the power of uh, 
uh, like thinking and doing research as well as uh, uh, so he is passionate about what he did he has developed synthesized these gold nanoparticles which is present here in the side photo those nanoparticles are real gold nanoparticles which he has made but he didn't know it the it is nano level because there is no electron microscope at that time so for nanotechnology you need electron microscope to see things at nano level 10 power of minus 9 meter so 10 power of minus 6 meter is micro that you can see by normal microscopes so by to see in the normal nanometers in, uh, in uh, to see what it is there nanometer well, you have to go for electron microscope and the electron microscope is not at all there. I think electrons are not even discovered when Michael Faraday is there. But even before the discovery of electron microscopy, he has developed uh, go, synthesis gold nanoparticles, which is stable till now and kept at a Royal Society Museum. And the nanoparticles are remaining in nano condition even now uh, in liquid form. So that's uh, uh, he has uh, he has made uh, man-made nanomaterials. And he called it as gold colloid, and that's there. Uh, so that's uh, like Faraday's uh, um, synthesis, and uh, people uh, worked on the synthesis part, and uh, later worked more on this and did some more innovations and uh, some other uh, technology development was done to it, added to it. So what I was doing is I was developing plasmonic nanoparticles and going for sensing. So nanoparticle nanoparticles will look like this in the uh, you can see the transmission electron microscope photo i don't want to ex i'm not going to explain the complete because i know there are students from different background here i don't uh, i don't want to explain the chemistry physics it will be too much hectic so i'll tell you how uh, this is the innovation i'm just starting with the slide problem so when i go for pitching when the, the word pitching is a startup person a founder or a, or a person who has an idea to develop a startup used to explain it to some funding agency or to the mentors or someone about what he planned to do so how we used to pitch is we start with the slide problem so we take a problem and give a solution so the problem here is india is the largest producer of milk in the world and uh, European Union as it is not a country. So we are the largest producer of milk. And during the Chinese milk scandal in 2008, it has been found melamine has been added to the milk due to which renal failure and kidney stones formation happened. So due to that large amount of like many, you know, there were some deaths and, and, uh, and there are many milk industries were closed in China. Later, it has been found that melamine adulteration has happening in 14 other countries. So including India. So we were trying to develop a solution. And the current detection methods to detect melamine in milk is this kind of big machines. This machine is like a, can you see, gas chromatography, gas chromatography, mass spectrography, HPLC. These are all very big, sophisticated instruments costing from 10 to 25 lakhs. Very huge in size, takes 30 to 60 minutes and each test costs 100 rupees so what we did is we used nanotechnology we functionalized materials these are the nanoparticles and uh, presence of melamine absence of melamine there will be change can you see the particles so in presence of melamine the nanoparticles synthesis will be different and here will be like different. So, okay so we found everything and uh, this is what we developed a new prototype yeah, handheld device which costs 2500 rupees compared to the GC 15 lakhs and will give results in 30 to 60 seconds and less than one rupee per test. So, when milk is coming from villages or two tire towns to cities, so you can't have all the milk being produced in cities, so milk comes from different places to cities. We were not able to detect the presence of melamine using the regular machines because these machines are sophisticated. And you can't keep it at all the towns and all the cities. They are present only in few places in a state. And that is not sufficient even for a batch, batch-wise testing of the milk. By using our prototype, a handheld device, every milkman can have it, use it in his house only and check it. Or every vehicle which is going and collecting the milk in the villages can test it before taking. So that's what we did using microfluidics and nanotechnology and this 
uh, technology has been taken care of by one more uh, 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 startup from IAS Indian Institute of Science. So the mentor under whom I worked, he has a startup and they are working on it. Uh, some further development is pending, so they are working on it. Uh, so this is how. So this innovation become one of the top uh, ten innovation selected by academic industry training program by Swiss government. And when I was pitching, there are ten students, ten startups from Switzerland side and ten startups from India. And uh, I'm happy to say that uh, while pitching and getting scores, we are on, uh, we are the first, uh, we are the, having the highest scores uh, during the pitching. You know, the best presentation and uh, even the Swiss. Uh, the PFL was uh, Oscars, the uh, PFL from Switzerland was the host institution. And they asked us a uh, 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 pitch copy to show to students from EPFL to explain them how a pitch has to be told. So that's, I'm happy that uh, Switzerland is one of the top 520 institutions uh, in uh, countries in innovation index. And uh, I'm happy that we are sending our pitch deck uh, to explain about how to pitch uh, to the students from uh, EP4. So, that's, uh, yeah. so then we went on to develop mercury protection using zinc oxide quantum dots temperature with aptamers. So uh, we developed quantum dots using zinc oxide with the DNA sequences and everything, and then that has been used for detection. Um, so that's uh, we were doing, and uh, this paper got published uh, last year. And currently, we are working on COVID-19 detection using a handheld device in one of the small hands. Also, uh, that will make sure that the complete uh, testing of the device uh, testing will be less than 100 rupees compared to 2,000 rupees RT-PCR. So our results will be equal to RT-PCR and will be accurate. And uh, uh, it's not detection of antibody. We'll be detecting the uh, virus itself in the COVID. So that work is going on. So I will explain you later. So this was a handheld nanoparticle synthesizer. Uh, we made a, this is a small syringe-like thing. When you pull the syringe, you can make nanoparticles. So I was planning to give this uh, nanoparticle synthesizer to school students so that the school, even a school student can make nanoparticles and can learn nanotechnology at school level so that when they come to college level, they will develop much more innovations in nanotechnology. So that's the main reason we are doing this. Uh, so then we also developed a nano race. Uh, so this is like, uh, can you see the TIM transmission electron microscope image? There are uh, very mono dispersed uh, uniform structures of nano rays, which is having like, uh, there are not even single spherical particles. So these nano ray structures were developed uh, in IAC in collaboration. So this is used for uh, photonic sensors. The same nano ray structures developed by Rice University as well as uh, Harvard in uh, US, they took 12 hours and uh, with high pressure and high temperature. So we broke the record. We did it in 30 seconds at room temperature. So this is actually a record, but we filed a patent. And uh, so you can see the monodisper structures. Also, there was a view down on the handle thermal like from one of my lab. But I was giving and uh, just uh, explaining the enzyme part. There is another person in my team who is a hardware guy who was developing this, um, who actually uh, was uh, putting it together and uh, uh, he developed it uh, uh, with, the, and uh, we were doing the molecular biology experiments and I was making sure that the PCR will work, even though there is uh, some small changes in the temperature. So uh, why I'm saying this is, uh, if you think it is possible, it is only uh, is very important is just you plan, dream of an idea, and then so current RT PCR during the COVID situation each cost was more than two lakh to four lakhs, and now uh, this PCR imagine three thousand rupees we are able to check, uh, uh, especially we are able to detect uh, malaria virus using our prototype at that time uh, two years back. Okay, that's the pitch deck, and this is the another pitch deck I am showing. Uh, so after I finished my postdoc in IAC, uh, first postdoc, uh, so I was like uh, planning uh, this Belandur issue was happening. So we thought of uh, creating some solution for the Belandur problem. So 
you know that uh, polluted water supply and sanitation there are so many issues happening across india not only this air pollution is also a big issue in delhi right now uh, during this winter time just after diwali so uh, for water pollution uh, there is a very important need to treat water at the uh, place where it is being created like uh, for houses and apartments sewage water will be there will be there that can be treated before releasing to rivers and lakes and also for industries so we used a different technology a new technology so you can see here uh, so immediately, immediately after a problem statement just after a problem statement you have to come to a solution while doing a quick pitch deck if you are during your college time looking for developing a product and trying to pitch this is the way how you have to uh, pitch and uh, so i am just comparing with the existing products and how we are different so we our treatment happens very fast in seconds and in a single step and uh, uh, the water can be reused uh, doesn't you know also reverse osmosis or anything so and also the cost of treatment comes down very less uh, so that's how uh, 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 we were using so we were using multi metallic nano clusters so uh, uh, nano clusters which after treatment can act as micro nutrients for plants so the sludge can also be used as a replacer for plants if it is from sewage water and uh, the water uh, there will be no smell nothing so that's how we did and uh, currently so here you can see the domestic sewage water treated water here some dye effluent so these are nano clusters seen under tm electron microscopy so currently we were like uh, uh, our technology has been implemented in uh, six bus depots bmtc bus depots bangalore mangaluru metropolitan transport corporation if you come to bangalore the bmtc buses will be running so that there are more than 48 bus depots if you have implemented in six bus depots uh, we did trials in one bus, one bus depot and then after successful trial now every month they purchase nano materials from us uh, and the cost of treatment is one third the cost previously it is 15000 for a bus depot having 100 to 150 buses right now the cost is only 4500 so uh, i hope they won't increase the ticket that's why we keep the treatment cost so if there can, if the day to day operation cost comes down uh, they won't uh, pause that uh, uh, if there is an increase in the prices they they will pause it to the passengers so we make sure that it is lesser than it is an affordable technology for the bmtc so later on we also use for dobi guns so here in one of the bus depots you can see the treated water uh, jainagar bus depot and uh, now right now uh, we are implemented in uh, bus num depot number 19 electronic city bus depot ms palaya depot 45 sumana kandi depot 31 so people who are in bangalore they will be knowing these locations uh, well versed uh, so after this technology implementation we got awards and uh, so there is a national award given by the spy during the uh, indo uk so the indian prime minister and the uk prime minister inaugurated in 2016 just before just after demontation uh, so we got this award and uh, uh, later uh, we implemented the technology in dobi guards so later during this covid we made sanitizers uh, hand sanitizers and uh, uh, using nanotechnology we did but uh, what happened is uh, we have to take permission uh, for because silver nanoparticles is having high antimicrobial activity against uh, covid-19 uh, we took some covid-19 samples after uh, getting permission from the chief minister's office uh, from the jayadeva institute of pathology and also we took some samples and we tested uh, using silver nanoparticles and uh, after testing control and negative and positive uh, we checked with rt pcr and checked whether there is a presence of virus is there or not after uh, respond after exposing it to Uh, our silver nanoparticles and uh, up, uh, there is 100 percent death of uh, uh, within 99.9 percent death of the virus within few seconds of exposure to the silver nanoparticles. Uh, we were happy that, but uh, still we have to go for several approvals to introduce a nano product for hand sanitizing uh, because currently we are using 70 percent alcohol. We are we are selling 70 percent alcohol based hand sanitizers through our own brand. We are supplying to big bazaar stores even in mysore big bazaar store is using our product uh, i think now they they are not purchasing anything few they for the day to day everyday customers are 
who are is entering big bus or mysore they have to use our product uh, so that was that so uh, for temples and mosques where people are afraid people don't want to use alcohol based sanitizer they can use silver nanotechnology based sanitizer uh, so it is alcohol free and uh, for also for schools and colleges school students when school starts you can't give alcohol based sanitizer because uh, by start, by mistake if it is uh, if any flammable substance comes near say it becomes a big issue uh, so uh, for that purpose our nanotechnology based sanitizer will be very useful i hope i get the permission right permission to make the things and release it for the sanitizer these are our clients uh, notable clients bharat petrochemical is using our nano product for three of their uh, units for the oil wash water and also iskan temple was using once and uh, sarmasis environment in chennai is using and uh, hand sanitizer we sold to more than 50000 people across four states in the last six months so i got a police pass and traveling across lockdown everywhere in bangalore and uh, uh, our vehicle was also given by funded by government of karnataka so we also gave free of cost to dobi guards so this is a dobi guard so you know dobi guard is where the people uh, the clothes will be washed so three of the dobi guards were uh, where we have installed our nanotechnology based waste water dobi uh, that uh, laundry wash water treatment plant there we gave free of cost and uh, these are few of the awards uh, we got one national award in 2017 from rashtrapati bhavan uh, unfortunately the president of india was not available to give it then uh, we were also state award uh, winner in 2016 17 and the then it minister mr pringer gave us giving us along with the funding support for our startup and uh, later we are one of the winners of tata social enterprise challenge in 2018 from tata trust and im calcutta and we demonstrated the uh, um, the nanotechnology based waste water treatment rapid treatment and uh, so this we got in indian science congress in london the indian science congress uh, which happened in jan 2020 for the best startup among the pride of india expo actually and, uh, so the thing is the pessimist sees the difficulty in every opportunity and an optimist sees the opportunity in every difficulty this is a famous statement by winston churchill yeah uh, so um uh, a person who a pessimist as you know i think you know what do you understand pessimist and optimist so if you think you cannot do everything which comes to you will look like as an obstacle but if you think you are able to do the thing which comes to you as a brick or something it can be used as a opportunity for the your passion for your journey and everything so it's all about so i use this parthenium plant which is a wheat plant for the innovation which resulted in the melamine detection device so the parthenium plant was highly useful for that um, so that's how uh, we were like uh, using it uh, for what i will go to speak later so also uh, also one more thing two two more important things which i have to uh, tell you is um, uh, see the most important thing is Uh, i once met the nobel laureate uh, gramin bank you know i think um, yunus mukhamad he came to indian institute of science and he delivered a talk about social entrepreneurship so we are a social entrepreneurship startup you know why because yunus mukhamad has told that made sure that the margin should always be less so we always keep the margin we won't we are not looking for very high profit we keep the margin less to make sure that the product reaches to all the people so that's the reason why uh, so that is social entrepreneurship uh, means if you are producing a material or something at uh, 10 rupees you don't have to sell that uh, means uh, so keeping the margin less means around 15 rupees or 20 rupees or like 15 rupees just 2 rupees or 15 rupees and sell it up so that's the main reason uh, uh, so uh, so that is social entrepreneurship Uh, so he made i think he just if you are whenever you are free you just go to uh, muhammad yunus uh, yunus muhammad uh, site and check the youtube videos of yunus muhammad and check how he uh, has made uh, social entrepreneurship successful he has converted 30000 workers in bangladesh into social entrepreneurs 
so he made them uh, he made them as a small scale vendors and and all so just go and read about him and you will come to know about what is happening uh, also now i will be uh, trying to share a few videos of the innovators like uh, carly and all i will be sharing now uh, also one more thing i want to share is i was once there as a coordinator for kvpy exam in uh, pune uh, there is a college so one of the coordinator told me that there is a student and that student has taken a stapler pin and stapler pin and the last five pins she has painted with red color she is a school student and the why because is that if the stapler pin is getting exhausted while stapling we will always we will be searching for the stapler pins if the pin uh, is normal but because of the painting in the last five pins are painted in red color we will come to know that the pins are getting going to be exhausted so this is the key small thing but she paid find a patent and the stapler company so stapler is a company just like jarod is a company so printer company so stapler is a immense company stapler company came to her and purchased the patent for almost 85 to 40 lakhs and with that man i i uh, she is not stopping with that particular innovation it's not a very big innovation it's a small thing but it will be helpful useful for people who are doing work uh, means uh, every day like uh, so when i use staples the pin sometimes gets exhausted i didn't know that it is the last pins means is the last one so then i have to search for the pins everywhere and then so i'll be in trouble so this is a small thing but imagine the patent so whatever you do small things you can be patented so you can go to intellectual property website so you can find uh, patent attorneys the maximum amount for filing a full patent is with international attorneys is only 50000 to 60000 and if you are filing a provisional patent is only 25000 even for filing if you are a student and going to file a patent the government is supporting and they will be repaying the patent charges so you can check check startup karnataka government of karnataka website where student innovators are being supported by government of karnataka and you student uh, you guys are right now in karnataka where startups are encouraged to the core so in bangalore also like um, we have more than 6500 startups in karnataka alone and every part of karnataka is supported by a startup ecosystem and right now the whole india we have a startup ecosystem and there is startup india website you go through it so students even a ug student i still remember a ug student who got a funding of 30 lakhs from government of karnataka for this uh, filters which he was making some new things so you are at the right place in karnataka and you can do innovations so it doesn't means it doesn't matter you are in a small institution big institution a like institution but it matters what you are thinking so that anirudh sharma is not from a very reputed institution or something he is from a normal institution so it matters what you are doing and how you are doing and doesn't matter where you are from and what background you are from what you are uh, done education or not even school students are innovating that's what i showed you that girl is still making more innovations with the 30 30 lakhs for three four patents her entire higher education even if she want to go abroad it will be secure so imagine so that's what uh, innovation can be even simple small but you know, that also would be key uh, so thank you ramesh for giving this great opportunity i will also show a few videos like uh, yeah okay yeah so i hope uh, you saw that and uh, there are so many tedx videos and uh, mr anirudh sharma he is my linkedin friend also uh, so you saw him talking so the main thing is take a problem think differently create a solution it can be a complicated sophisticated solution can be a simple solution uh, but don't stop doing things or don't stop creating new things so just because of any pressure or anything if you need any help from indian institute of science we are happy you can come any time my startup office is also there in sri ic you can hop in and uh, we can show our labs whenever you guys come to bangalore go visit ic uh, so thank you very much uh, over to the organizers thanks a lot and keep innovating so 
So this is the right time you have the entire internet in your hand, the smartphone. And when I was doing UG, I don't have it. So I started with the UG in zoology, PG in molecular biology, PhD in chemistry, and uh, now postdoc in physics. So I touch all the subjects. So people used to tell me that uh, you can't get job because you are doing degrees in different discipline. So now I got job only because of the interdisciplinary work. And uh, now I pro we provide jobs. So it's a th different thing. So uh, when people tell you about uh, something, this is not happening, this is uh, this won't happen, you can't do it. Especially when you they tell you can't do it, then you have to do it. Uh, so that's the main thing. When I was a UG student, there was a PhD student from physics. He told me, uh, I was putting a poster. Uh, you know, very at that time when uh, first years of UG undergraduation, we used to copy paste from, uh, I used to go to browsing center. I don't have internet. Uh, we don't have access like that, like now, 2007, 4, 2004, 2005. Uh, so I copy pasted about some nanotechnology uh, shells for cancer treatment using photodynamic thermal therapy. I put it in a poster and he used to come and say, you know, Dan Daniel, you know, Daniel, nanotechnology is so difficult. You can't do, you have to learn quantum mechanics. You should be a physics graduate. Unfortunately, you are a zoology graduate. You can't do anything. Now, uh, now we have developed a technology that even a school student can make nanomaterials in his kitchen or her kitchen. So that's, uh, if I could have taken his advice seriously, being a PhD scholar from physics, if I have taken his advice, uh, and I'm just an undergraduate. I would have never entered the field of nanotechnology. But I, it was there in my heart. Uh, we were thinking that maybe he may be wrong. Maybe we can do it. So, so you guys. So what I'm saying is, if someone is telling you you can't do it, when you are interested to do it, you have to do it, and you have, you have to finish it, and uh, you have to make sure that it is working condition. If a product or it can be something. So if you are passionate, you have to do it. So that's more important and keep your passion high, keep your creative thinking high and uh, never stop experimenting. It can be a small uh, thing, but never stop experimenting. So that's what, thank you very much. Over to the organizers. Yeah. yeah. Thank you very much, sir, for your valuable uh, insights. Uh, we really like the products that you showcased, the, that your company thank has you. developed. And uh, they, those are truly innovative. Uh, Moving on to the next session, like a lot of people who are attending the session right now have questions for you. So I'll be reading out to them and uh, I'll be really grateful to you if you could yes, answer yes, them. Yes, definitely. I'm happy to. Yeah. Uh, so the first question is, uh, during the winter time, it's become a norm now that in Delhi and the surrounding area, there's a lot of air pollution that, that takes place. So uh, do you think there's anything that you could or your company could come up yeah, with? Yeah, we did. We did actually. <laughs> we mm -hmm. made a... I sorry, I don't have the PPT. I have to go and search for it. Uh, there is a person who came, who came and met me in IAC and told Daniel, can you do something for the air pollution? I am highly interested, and I met so many people in IAC. No one helped me. So can you do it? He, I told him, I am sorry, I am in water pollution now, and I am stuck in that. And uh, I was telling him, but he came continuously. He came and uh, now we developed something using nanotechnology, nano material coated membrane. And uh, that membrane uh, was able to stop the PM2.5, PM10, and uh, the air can be recent again. We were making smart towers. So he was connected with Delhi government and uh, he told me that currently orders are being given to Chinese people who developed very big smoke to us. That is before COVID. Now we are not going to purchase any Chinese products, as if, at least from the government perspective. Uh, uh, so there was huge smoke towers developed by Chinese people, which were quoted in crores. And uh, the Supreme Court of India has directed IIT Bombay to develop products and install in Delhi to curb air pollution. That's a Supreme Court order, actually. IIT representatives were there representing the directors of IIT. But unfortunately, IIT Bombay has told we are not able to develop within a short time. They gave six months. So this man who was with me, we both went to Pinya. There is a Pinya industrial estate here in Bangalore, one of the largest industrial estates in Asia uh, what, uh, a long time back. There we developed something. We have a 10 feet high device and we gave a demo of the device and he even won an award last year. Uh, he started along. I also was, uh, we both were pitching 
and uh, we developed a prototype where we can use uh, the prototypes at uh, highly congested locations for uh, purifying the air and uh, uh, so that the air can be purified and the smoke can be like uh, taken care of. So we have done that and we have checked it with the sensors from Indian Institute of Science and other labs uh, for the same uh, uh, prototype and it was working well. Uh, so we have stored everything. So I hope uh, we have given the representation to the Supreme Court that, uh, that the product has been developed and if they are happy and uh, we can install at uh, different locations uh, in Delhi. Uh, also, the product has been uh, is in the process of validation by National Physical Laboratory, uh, New Delhi, which is the uh, prim, uh, institution responsible for uh, checking any instrument prototypes. Uh, and also, they are very uh, working closely with the Delhi government for air pollution. So we did a prototype. So we took that problem. So every major issue will come to us to IAC also specifically, um, yeah. but the main problem is I think Punjab and Haryana, there is a stubble burning and there are some grand challenges and uh, uh, using the grand challenges, uh, uh, many people have started making many innovations where instead of burning the stubble, the stubble can be reused for making uh, economically better products. So that also is very important and there is Badarpur power plant near Delhi, uh, thermal power plant. And we have told the concerned uh, Thermal Corporation of India is there. That's a Thermal Power Corporation of India is also there. We have told them that that is also a very big uh, polluter which is nearby to Delhi within uh, 50 kilometers. Uh, so that Thermal Power Plant either has to be shifted or uh, has to be taken care of. So NGT is taking care of the National Green Right, right, right. So any other questions? Uh, um, so. Oh. Yeah, and I guess uh, uh, one of our viewers wanted to ask. Uh, I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Can you hear me, Nasa? Yeah. Uh, one of our viewers wanted to ask you about how your initial yeah. days were, sir. You had the vision of building a big company and that thing. So, how did you do your so were the papers all the sleepless nights like the show in movies or had it all figured out so early days, uh, even right now, uh, we have, I, I think we are still a early stage startup. <laughs> to tell you. Uh, so the thing is, uh, we uh, when we started, it's very difficult. See, uh, you in uh, the every team member has to do all the roles of the startup. See, uh, I have to go to a BMTC bus depot. I have to make sure treatment is happening. I can't wait for the operator to come. Myself, I have to add the solution. So you can't, uh, there is no hierarchy in startups. And uh, as a, if you, if we are developing a new startup, we should be ready to take every role, even uh, cleaning the office room. Or We can't wait for a boy to come and clean it. We have to do everything right from A to Z. So uh, there are huge problems, I means initial problems are financial issues. Uh, my father was giving some one lakh rupee for some bootstrapping for the startup and uh, later, uh, I'm fortunate I'm in Karnataka uh, state and the Elevate program was run by the government at that time. So the government, as per the Elevate, any student innovator can apply with an idea and now it, it has to be a startup registered in an incubation center in an institution. Uh, even in your institution and then apply for the funding so there is a funding support from 5 lakhs to 30 lakhs so with that funding support it's not a loan so it's a fund grant given to you you don't have to repay but you have to use the fund for the specific uh, uh, products development means for the development of products and for the initial salaries so uh, i never used to take a very big salary i used to take very small amount of salaries means uh, I mean, a small amount means a very small uh, scale of salaries. Uh, of, uh, so you can't, uh, it's a startup is like uh, uh, the initial early stage startup is like uh, your own venture where you have to make sure it won't uh, go wrong. So you have to cut the burning expenses, everyday expenses, monthly expenses. You know, Google and some of the top companies have started from a shed. So you don't have to be in a very big uh, 
what a very big uh, incubation center and building uh, there are few startups i know in bangalore they have started stealthily means they won't tell reveal the what they are doing and they try prototype and those prototypes get feedback initial feedbacks from the people test it and then when everything is ready they will go for a, a registered you don't have to register as a private limited or a, uh, uh, some firm at the early stage you can start taking the idea and developing a develop a prototype so that you don't have the you don't have to get the expenses of gst filing or some other thing which is related to private limited company or something so the main thing uh, is that's what i face like i didn't register for a company immediately so i tested so i i not i like a v so <laughs> we are team so we tested it we tested the product uh, before going to the uh, before going for a proper registration or a proper uh, so we tested whether whether it is workable product and whether it whether the market likes the product whether the people likes it whether the it makes the product makes the people uh, uh, people's uh, i mean it may be a wastewater treatment whether the wastewater treatment process is uh, easy enough for the people to use uh, so that's more important uh, so i hope uh, what i, I answered uh, to like so this is what is very important for a early right. stage starter so we yes. faced problems all the problems more than the movies which is being shown uh, i used to go in right. undeserved trains and we have to be ready for everything so 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 you mentioned that uh, like 6 years ago like you were yeah. in a very academic uh, mode of your life like you have your phd also but what made you uh, take a transition from academic part to a uh, to a job where it's more of like entrepreneur and you have to come up with yeah. your own stuff so what made yeah. you do that so uh, sometimes uh, we should always not think about the degrees we gained so i should not think that i have a degree phd and uh, i should get a salary of minimum 60 to 70000 if i go enter the regular education should for teaching purpose after a postdoc in iisc uh, so the salary and all those things uh, you have to forget for few days few months uh, when the product when you go for a startup and uh, you have to go on a lean survival model like uh, you uh, the uh, so uh, the main thing is i was thinking uh, being a phd i used to think after my postdoc i can join a research i can join a education institute for teaching purpose or i can go abroad and do research and again uh, develop products and that products uh, so uh, what i thought is then again the patents has to be filed and uh, are we have to publish in a regular research project the main criteria years back now uh, now the criteria has changed years back it is only publication you do you take a research project you do publication and leave it and it will be as a publication only there will be no products developed right now governments are focusing both central and state develop products and the prime minister came to iic told we want products we want products which will solve problems we don't want products which can be there and destroy so go for real time products that's what the prime minister told me i see i have heard from one of the professors who attended the meeting with the uh, uh, prime minister so now the government is focused on real time solving problems by solutions rather than uh, just publication you should not end up with publication this message is being given to the faculties of central state institutions even by mail and everything so they are asking a question now in the project report is this project is going to end up with a product is this project is this work is going to end up with a product or not like that the questions but that doesn't means basic research should not be encouraged uh, so that's very important and uh, also like uh, 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 coming back to the question if i have entered as a normal research job i'll be doing only publications for my promotions and everything so i thought we can why don't we why should we go for the regular job we will do we will take our own ideas from my phd so this startup is from my phd work the waste water treatment so during my phd i was doing this with the help of my guide so we can we take up the phd issue and uh, develop into a bigger product and help the people mm, and then we will uh, make sure that revenue is also going on so we will take the salary what we will usually get from research institutions or a teaching i mean a normal college 
so that decision i took and now i'm i'm not uh, feeling bad because i'm getting revenue and i'm able to pay the my workers more than what they get from other companies and also my uh, our startup is we have a satisfaction that we are doing something different we help uh, our team members are also like very happy that we do something different and uh, so each of our team member contributes means we uh, each one comes with a new idea and every idea will be discussed uh, together and we will find out uh, even troubleshooting we sit together and discuss so uh, there is no hierarchy and all we should never follow hierarchy in uh, startups just like companies i have seen many startups failing because of this hierarchy we followed all those things yeah. so i am happy <laughs> so being in a startup Uh, yeah. So living. That's why there are some programs for students uh, changing, converting from regular education to startup. Right. So when everybody thinks of startup, the biggest fear is failure. So like, what if I fail? Is kind of running in the head all the time. It's great so to fail did, first. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So how do you uh, deal with failure? How did you approach and get investors to invest in your startup? Sir? yeah so till now i got grant worth 1 crore i never went for investors because i am very afraid of investors but it is good to get investment the investor also should think about the social entrepreneurship which we are following in selling the products at a lesser cost but the investors usually a investor looks at getting the payback in how much money will be coming back for the investment they have done so getting an investor is like a partner right but getting a right partner so um, he has to be in the same wavelength and frequency of the founders and the other startup members so if he insists only on selling the product and income generation that's good actually money is the most important thing but being a social entrepreneur we are different actually i didn't say that i am telling you that we are not a regular entrepreneurs we are social entrepreneurs and also funded by tata trust and titan for 65 lakhs for being a social entrepreneurship startup that means we won't sell products at highly expensive cost means at a very expensive cost just because we are only developing the products for example for the waste water treatment using nanotechnology we are the only startup in india i can easily monopolize and i can increase the rates after taking the initial clients but i won't we won't do it because we are here to help the people and we are here to serve them and uh, so we so that that part will become a problem when investors come into picture i don't know how many investors will be social on un- will be supporting socially entrepreneurship that's the main thing so now we are recycling the money coming from the uh, revenue and putting back and uh, changing the scale and also the other question you are asking is about uh, failing it's very good to fail fast uh, startups and uh, learn it and come back so he, the best thing uh, uh, to prevent from uh, the easy step uh, uh, is to take the product take the product and go to the people it can be if it is a sofa or it can be a lift or something you take the product and go to the people and test it and check it whether they like it or not we should not push the product so the, most of the startups fail because they want to push the product what they have developed to the people you can do aggressive marketing but any of the people see uh, air pollution is a very big issue and if you do a nanotechnology based air purifier then it is a solution given to them at the right time so your solution should be released at the right time and the right uh, people so that is most important during covid situation if we release a nanotechnology based sanitizer it will be a super hit but problem is <laughs> the regulatory authorities stopped it but still we are able to sell to we had a, a revenue also very good revenue also during the sales but still we are uh, lesser than the products sold by other companies during the peak time march and april they were selling at a exorbitant cost we were selling at the controlled price so we are happy that we were like doing it uh, so also that uh, so this is more important so how to Uh, prevent from a failure is how a startup can succeed is before starting a startup the products initial products can be tested means it can be an app it can be an app the app can be tested uh, user test and check the users not only from city 
from village to the towns and check whether they really need it or not uh, so then by that we will come to know whether the market likes the product or not if the market likes the product and if your product even though your initial prototype is not that good you are uh, you can improvise on it and develop a better product and sell it to so that's the most important thing you have to make sure that uh, uh, you have to test means you have to check it can be your family members it can be your neighbors who will see the product and feel it and whether it is good or bad but oh this you can do it in different ways i will tell you some people in titan for example they made a watch uh, they made a watch i think they made a watch a jewel i think the watch and yeah watch which will track the record it will track it is mainly for during this uh, nirbhaya case happened they made a watch for security issue for it's a women's watch so that watch will give signal and gps location to their uh, parents or whoever it may be a husband or whoever brother or anyone but that product is a failure that product is a failure in the market you know why because women don't like their map means their location to be monitored continuously so titan uh, the main product of the titan field so that is an issue so uh, people won't like so we have to think in people's way of the product we should not think in our way only oh i have made a watch and that watch will help uh, students uh, uh, girls or anyone who is going for a walk or going for park or... but they will look in a different way they don't their privacy is being uh, means uh, their privacy is being taken and so they think in a different way they don't want uh, them to be monitored they thought that the watch is going to be uh, become a hindrance for uh, their entire everyday day to day activity they will be having that in the mind when they go out and come back so that became a failure but titan was thinking they are giving a wonderful watch with that the people will be uh, giving a distress signal they can press the button it will go immediately but people thought it is being monitored so so these things small things will uh, jeopardize the product so even though titan is a very big company this one product uh, see imagine the product is available they have so many product specialist so then they realized the problem and they stopped it and then they developed some other prototypes with different security uh, features so these things are very important we have to think in the customer's point of view or the client point of view it can be a customer client it can be a person who is going to use the product we should not think in our own way every day oh this is good this is good we always think and if you ask our neighbors if you ask our family members they will also tell because of you afraid of you they will be telling oh this is good this is good you go ahead so that's more important okay sir right yeah. uh, so sir i stay in udupi and in the okay. past few days in the in the beaches that's present in udupi there's a lot of bioluminescence the process of bioluminescence okay. happening great uh yeah and and people i mean and the scientists tell that the major cause of bioluminescence is because okay. of the pollution that happens oh. in the oceans uh, yeah uh, so do you think like the products that you develop like, like the nano products do you think they could help yeah, i want to know actually, the pollution uh, uh, and, and eventually yeah. prevent this so uh, in udp you are seeing this in seashore yes seashore? sir we have several beaches yeah Okay, in the beaches in the okay, 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 okay. Um, yeah. Before going for a wastewater treatment, what I do is I collect the we collect the samples and test it and see what are the pollutants present in the concern water. Uh, so we it may be heavy metal, it may be a uh, organic uh, waste matter from leather industry or something, or it can be some pesticides or some chemicals. Uh, so we have to check the profile of the sea water and then try to find out a solution for that. so we have different nano materials uh, they we are using the essential minerals we are not using anything highly toxic like uh, some people developed a quantum dot based on cadmium uh, and used for cancer therapy cadmium itself will cause cancer so so that is very important you can't uh, use a, a material which will become cancerogenic so we are using essential micron nutrients for nano material making and that is being used i want to know the profile of the wastewater there in udp or nagaru beach so i will I, since you are told now i will connect to the people there i have few friends in udp so i'll talk to them and uh, try to find out what is there happening and uh, why it is happening 
and then we will find out uh, so there will be some industries which is releasing some kind of industrial water i think and those industries have to treat it at their location and then send the treated water to the uh, sea shore as well, like to the seas either because of those industries or because of uh, some other uh, because of, if the oxygen level is less there will be some plants or something which is i will check it out i have not heard about this bioluminescence i thought some luminescence because of some jellyfish or something that's why i was happy because you were telling green fruits and protein we you know from jellyfish it gives bioluminescence okay yes, great so you can send us reports there's one uh, question from uh, a viewer named prajwal br he is asking why you haven't commercialized the nano tissue even if it had a lot of uh, uh, scope or market in, uh, medicine industry yes 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 right now during covid it has a very big scope and uh, if you guys if you viewers anyone is uh, working with uh, if any of your people are in uh, or uh, connected to a tissue paper company who is flexible enough us to allow us inside their uh, manufacturing unit then we can immediately implement it. immediately start selling it because uh, this is very important because uh, patients from hospitals they sneeze in the tissue paper and throw it off wherever they are if it is not properly incinerated if it is covid that covid will spread from the droplets are present in the tissue paper if someone is you know poor economics they, uh, they don't wear mask they don't wear uh, what is that uh, gloves every time and they collect all the garbage waste everything so tissues may spread the infections so i am very happy if someone is connecting to me from tissue paper industry it will be great so any of the viewers who are here connected with the tissue paper industry if you are coming i will be very happy to mm. we can start the work because i am already involved in some six seven projects including air pollution so that's the biggest uh, thing and uh, i am still teaching guiding students in iic uh, so there are some this the time is the biggest problem and i am happy if you are if someone is coming with a tissue paper tissue paper or if you are knowing a tissue paper company owner or someone who is uh, then you if you come to me i will give some materials you can easily coat it and embed on the tissue paper you can take it to the market immediately based on this live show we will then uh, the startup also will, you will also be having revenue as well as the people also will have a high grade nano product until now there is no nano tissue paper on the world except one product from iran i don't know how good effective it is yeah okay yes sir uh so the last one last question from uh, a viewer named namita r so she's asking uh, were there any drawbacks that you faced while creating nano products uh, there were if there were there so what were the drawbacks so drawbacks means uh during a chemical reaction uh, consistency is very important you do a reaction you get a product and if the reaction is not consistent the product will be different then it won't be useful for waste water treatment so for a typical nano technology experiments the consistency of the nano material is the most important and we were able to uh, there will be drawbacks the drawbacks are there in every point of uh, research related uh, work which is converted into a startup so especially nano technology being converted to be taking a nano product to a startup so we faced so many issues Uh, scaling up, for example, when I do in test tube, it will be effective, and then I take a beaker and take sewage water and take our nano material and do it. It will be effective, but when I go for tank level, it is not. It may not be working at that time. So we were thinking, why oh, it is happening? Why oh, it is happening in uh, test tube level, beaker level? But when you go for a tank, it is not working. Then we uh, found so troubleshooting is the most important thing in a startup, even in a research team. Uh, from a college or wherever you do troubleshooting is more important. You have to observe why it is happening, why it is not happening. What are the conditions which has changed from a test tube to a tank? So these things are there. And another drawback is people is not people are not accepting government agencies. They are asking, oh, nanotechnology is a big issue. Nanotechnology will be creating some other problems. And BMTC operators, you know, they told, sir, I was having some kind of fever after uh, using your nano product and all this. Then I took the nano product in my hand and showed, see, this is what is, it's a water based and it won't harm you. Uh, so the thinking, you no, know, the people, so ethically, so ethics, uh, so those drawbacks are also there. When you take a new product and enter a market, Nano means something. It may be harmful. So 
when you google nano you will see so many things all bad things are also there uh, toxicity of nano if you put there will be 100 things but it depends upon the size of the nano particle and the material you are using if you are using a cadmium nano particle then cadmium itself is uh, toxic and when using it without a capping agent it will become toxic and when you use a nano particle of 20 nanometer or above it will be not toxic and especially for waste water treatment the main problem we faced is what will happen the nano particle goes into rivers and lakes if nano particle itself will go what will happen that is the biggest uh, hindrance i have faced and uh, you know what when we if there are any chemical engineering students or who are there in the live they will understand even biotechnology people when you synthesize nano particles you make it in ro water for your understanding i'm saying it is usually dm water or uh, uh, distilled water if you synthesize nano particles the moment the synthesis nano particles goes from distilled water to lake or regular water it will tend to aggregate the nano particle will come together and become big aggregates so these big aggregates actually helps in precipitating the pollutants and bringing it down so there is no chance the nano particle will remain as nano level in water where there are minerals dissolved so all our ground water and river water lake water there are tds is the total dissolved solids some minerals will be there ph is different so the moment it comes into contact with this uh, water where minerals are there or some other uh, materials are there it becomes start aggregating so if there are no pollutants it will aggregate and come down normally if there is pollutant then it will aggregate and bring the pollutants along with the aggregation and bring it down so that is the principle of nanotechnology being used for waste water treatment so this principle when i was in early stage startup explaining the bmtc chairman that chairman at the time was a person he is from political background and i was like i was telling like this one i was with the marker so you have to be creative while approaching the market we have to be creative while explaining to the people maybe a village they won't understand we have to tell them we have to explain nanotechnology to such people so that they won't they will understand so i was explaining like this and then we are able to answer them and many so they nominated few scientists from even iac the people were told to check our products and we explained the whole thing and that's how we were so the ethic uh, nanotechnology based products entering a market especially related to water the biggest hurdle is uh, the pollution or any side effect caused by the nano material itself so then we told them then we told them what we are using is essential micronutrients in nano i hope you understood i gave a clue about the nano materials which you are using i think yes. yeah so essential micronutrients means it may be iron copper zinc and all those things so this is being traditionally used also in bulk form you are using nano form so that's what uh, right. we did yeah uh, so in the past few days over instagram used to have this questionnaire thing where uh, okay. where we promise a winner that he'll get to interact with you if he gets all the question right he or she gets like, all the questions yeah. right so yeah. we have the winner and uh, so he will get the opportunity right now to talk to you uh, and he'll get yes. a, uh, he'll get to ask a question to you okay yeah hey good evening sir yes. yeah good evening sir uh sir uh, my question is uh, you know yeah. what was the impact and applications of nano science that uh, not to place to in this covid uh, situations okay so the covid situation how nano, what is the impact of nano science that's the question he is asking so we developed a cold nano particle based uh, detection technique but uh, we have completed the trials and uh, it has to be given to the government of india and we are going to test uh, check it before nimhans and other institutions Uh, using this gold nano particle based uh, rapid detection we can detect uh, the virus within uh, 32 to 40 32 uh, 20 to 30 minutes uh, the mainly from the rna isolated from the virus so this is uh, a vir- uh, it's an rna based virus so if you go for rt pcr the pcr will take minimum 40 to uh, 62 to uh, 120 minutes Uh, normal rt pcr present in the two tier town or something it will take uh, at least 2 3 hours 
so we are reducing it by many fold and uh, the re cost the cost comes down to less than 100 rupees uh, for each testing so it will be a small kit we can use it like a pregnancy kit in our uh, house itself and check it every time when we are either with the fever which you are having is infected or not so every time we don't have to go to hospitals be in queue and during the hospital visit itself we are getting into this. Uh, that is what i some of my friends told so we can do it in easy way so that is one of the question answer yeah uh, so other uh, applications are there using nanotechnology by nano coated surfaces are being used in this using waste water treatment means you for uh, viral spreading and all to stop yeah and also for wastewater treatment i have heard that viral rna is present in sewage water which is being stopped uh, which can be stopped by using our nano products we have told to the bbmp and other corporations to use our wastewater, wastewater treatment using our nano products for stopping the viral rna spreading using sewage water yeah. uh, thank you sir thank you shreyas uh, and well done on that Instagram uh, questions. So yeah, coming, to you, the, uh, yeah. coming to the end of the session, I'd like to propose the word of thanks now. Uh, I thank a beloved vice chancellor of uh, JSS STU, Professor Sidra Maya. Special thanks goes to our registrar, Mr. S. A. Dhanraj. And I'd like to express gratitude to our beloved principal of uh, JSS STU, Professor S. B. Kevade for their support and encouragement. I'd like to express my sincere thanks to Professor Malikarjun Aradhya, the president of IIC JSSSTU, and Dr. B.S. Harish, convener of IIC JSSSTU, for creating this opportunity to organize a successful entrepreneurial talk. I must mention my heartfelt gratitude to Dr. S.C.G. Kiruba Daniel, sir, for the inspiring talk you gave today. A big thanks to all the viewers who stayed all along, and I hope you all were able to seek guidance and imbibe knowledge from Sir's thoughts. And I hope that he gave you the spark you needed to take the big step. Thank you, everybody, and thank you. Thank you, 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 thank